Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Lou. Finally have a DIY project for you. Um, started this channel with the intention of it being a DIY channel and it morphed into something totally different. Haven't been able to do a DIY project in months because life got crazy. Anyway, today I'm gonna be making over a smelly dresser, literally smelly. Um, Long story short, we are about to welcome a new baby into this family. I am 37 weeks and some change pregnant. We just moved into this house that I'm sitting in, that I'm bouncing in. Uh, I am on a yoga ball, so forgive me if I'm bouncing a little bit. Just trying to get that baby into optimal position, you know? Um, we will be room sharing with our newborn and the current state of our bedroom is um, absolute shambles. So this is a little bit of a two part video. The first part is this dresser makeover. The dresser will become the baby changing station in our bedroom and it'll also house all of our clothing, diapers, wipes, baby clothes, etc. So that's part one. Part two is going to be our bedroom makeover where we're actually getting the dresser in there, creating a little cozy nursery nook with all of the baby essentials and sort of getting our bedroom in order before this baby comes. So that'll be part two. Hopefully, <laughs> before I go into labor. The timeline's a little tight, so we'll see. Hopefully we can get it all done. But today we're gonna turn this smelly old dresser into like a funky, fun, baby changing station. All right, let's jump in. Well, there's not a lot of jumping going on. There's a lot of slow walking going on. It's a slow waddle, you'll see. Let's do it. Okay, this is my hot tip for keeping track of hardware when you're working on a dresser or any piece of furniture like this is to use painter's tape or like masking tape and just kind of tape, smush those. Those screws are like in here, the door hinge screws. Smush them in and then you've got yourself a little like screw pocket. And then I'll just tape it somewhere like the side of the fridge where I know that I'll see it at some point. Hot take. Okay, I had to have a little wardrobe change because the mosquitoes are so bad out here. I didn't wanna just cover myself in bug spray, so long sleeves, long pants it is. Let me tell you what I'm about to do. I've decided that before I do any priming, I'm gonna actually sand the top of the dresser because it's particle board, which is, ew, gross. It's got some bubbling from like drinks that someone sat on it. There's just still like some water damage rings and I really don't wanna see those. Honestly, you know, I could get away with just priming over them and painting and it'd be fine. It will be covered up by a changing pad, diapers and other miscellaneous baby items, but I wanna at least try to make it look good. So the plan is to sand with, I don't even know what grit sandpaper I have. I'm gonna use what I have. Hopefully 80, 120, I don't know, we'll see. But I'm gonna do some nice sanding on the top I'm not gonna worry about sanding any of the other pieces and parts of the dresser because I'm using a bonding primer, which allows you to pass the sanding stage. We'll see. I'm feeling lazy, so I really am trying to reduce the number of steps that I have to take to finish this dresser. Um, it's not even that I'm lazy. I'm just, I'm, I'm very pregnant and I'm tired. So that's the plan. We're gonna do some sanding and then we're gonna go in and prime. <sighs> It's hard to tell because it still looks crazy, like someone might have thrown up on top of this dresser, but that really did the trick. It knocked off all of those raised bits and now it's just smooth as a, as a little baby's bottom. Let's get to priming. 
So next up is priming. I'm gonna roll with this Zinzer Bullseye One Two Three. What I like about this primer is that it bonds to any surface, according to this label right here. It's basically a bonding primer, which means you don't technically have to sand the surface you're gonna paint before you put the primer on. It's probably recommended that you sand anyway, but again, I'm feeling like doing the bare minimum. Well, the bare minimum would be not doing this at all, but I'm like a step above bare minimum, you know what I mean? So yeah. Bullseye one, two, three. I got a little roller. I'm gonna roll. In an ideal scenario, we would be spraying this paint on. We do have a paint sprayer somewhere. Don't know where it is. Haven't uncovered it in the in the mess of the moving, but this 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 ought to be fine. Or we're gonna roll with it. I'm gonna use this little brush to stipple in the cutouts on the drawer faces, and I think that should work perfectly. Okay, Ooh. my pregnant body has had about all it can take today, so this is where I'm gonna leave it. I'll let it sit overnight. I know it says one hour, dry time and then you can do the top coat but i'm i'm over it today so come back tomorrow and apply the first coat of paint you know it's a good diy day when you don't get any paint on your pants One thing I've got to figure out is how I'm going to paint the wooden areas of these handles and not the brass. I do have a steady hand, but I don't think it's steady enough to get like down in these cracks. So I'm thinking I might try painter's tape, like use a razor blade and painter's tape and just cut like a tiny little strip. I'm gonna give that a try. Oh yeah, that, that's nice, that's nice. Oh my gosh, y'all, I feel, I feel really good about that. Okay, I've run up to my local Ace Hardware. I'm pretty sure all Ace Hardwares carry Benjamin Moore paint, but I prefer Benjamin Moore. It's not even really a preference, it's just what I'm used to using. When I worked in an interior design office, we specified Benjamin Moore, so I'm just like familiar with their numbering system and like I have favorites from Benjamin Moore. I brought my giant fan deck just in case. I need to see 20,000 more options while I'm in there, but for the dresser, I'm thinking one of these two colors. This lighter one, Ian and I thought looked a little too much like duck poop. So I think this is, this is the color. This is lichen green, 2150-20 from Benjamin Moore. Yeah, I just wanted it to be close to olive like an olive green and this ought to do it. I mean, look at that. That's, let me do a side-by-side -side with an actual olive and this paint color. 
Let's go see what they have. Watch, watch them carry Sherwin Williams. Got the goods. That was very expensive. Oftentimes I'll choose a Benjamin Moore paint color that I like and just have it matched with a cheaper paint from wherever. Lowe's, Home Depot. But today I actually wanted to get the Benjamin Moore paint because it is a little higher quality and since it's going on a dresser that's gonna get a lot of use, I wanted to just have that extra durability and sometimes you just gotta treat yourself, you know? You gotta treat yourself. So that's why I went with the Benjamin Moore. What is this? Um, what did I get? That's what I got. It's a premium. And you definitely pay a premium. I mean, this was almost 30 bucks for a quart, so not cheap, but I've cheaped out on enough paint in my lifetime to like splurge a little here and there. So went with the premium. Okay, before we get started painting, just wanted to show you the tools that I'm using. This is the same paint tray from yesterday. I didn't feel like peeling out the paint, cleaning the tray yesterday. So just covered it with foil. This should be fine. I've done this many times in the past. It works great. I've got a roller with a, what is this? This is sort of a, a medium nap. This isn't ideal. I think what would be ideal is a foam roller. And I thought I had one, but I do not. I'm gonna give it a go with this roller and see how it turns out. If it's, a, if it's too splotchy, then I'll stop and go to the hardware store. So I'm gonna roll any flat areas and then I'll go in with a paintbrush and do any of the details, the corners that I couldn't easily get with the roller. So, here we go. Right? I mean, this color may not be for everyone, but I'm into it. I'm into this, yes. Okay, really wasn't sure about this color when I first started rolling it on, but the more I covered, the more I fell in love with it. It's funky, it's got like a vintage feel to it, and that's exactly what I wanted. So I'm excited. I did a very thin layer of paint for this first coat. I just didn't want it to get gloopy on me, you know, and kind of drip anywhere. So I think the second coat is going to be the kicker and it's going to be awesome. It is a little splotchy with using this paint roller, but I think once I get that second coat on there, it's going to be fine. I may even do a third coat. I don't know. Feeling a little jazzy now. I didn't mention it before, but I bought these really adorable turned wooden legs. We're gonna just pop these on the bottom to give the dresser a little more height. The dresser is a little low to be a changing table, so I think the extra four inches that we're gonna get from these legs are gonna just make it perfect. I'm back 
This is pretty much the final tedious step in the process of refinishing this dresser. We're gonna be sealing the deal with a polycrylic. It's a water-based clear sealant. It's a protective top coat. As much as I did not want to do any more work to this dresser, I'm ready to be done. I do think it's important to do at least one, ideally two to three, um, layers of a top coat. It protects the paint underneath, so it gives you that extra layer of protection. And since this is a dresser, it's, it's gonna be used pretty roughly, you know, slamming, well, slamming, like, what? So aggressive. Opening and shutting the drawers over time, over and over, it's gonna create a lot of wear, so I want to really seal this paint in because, you know, we've spent days painting at this point, we need to protect our work. And it says to use a high quality synthetic brush. Um, clearly this is just a good brush, but I think it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Got this at the grocery store actually, so hopefully it'll be fine. So yeah, this is the final step before we put this bad boy together and get it in the room and get ready for this baby because she's almost here. It's a girl, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. So excited. Anyway, let's get on with it. We're done. I love it so much. I'm in love with the color. You know, this color might be a little polarizing. I understand. It's not for everyone. Avocado green. Wait, I was calling it olive green. But I think this color is gonna work really well with the palette direction that I have in mind for the bedroom. So be sure to stick around because part two of this dresser makeover will actually be bringing the dresser inside and creating a cozy little nursery nook. I'm calling it a nursery nook. Um, I think that's a thing. I think it's gonna be pretty cute and cozy and precious. So hopefully we can get it done before this baby comes in a couple of weeks. All right, if you're still here, thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye. Now I gotta get off of this thing. <laughs> Help.